muscle you want to keep it. You want to keep it because it doesn't just give you good hair, it doesn't just give you nice glowing skin, uh, it's important for everything, okay? I want to talk about your muscle and dieting, okay? And why it's important to keep it, and what you can do about it to keep it. Dr. Louis is my name, I'm a medical doctor and inventor of Bionic Gin, but let's talk about uh, your muscles and dieting. Most people lose between, when they're dieting, 20 to 35% of their weight loss is due to uh, protein and muscle loss. This is disastrous. And this is one of the main reasons why people yo-yo diet and people's health tends to deteriorate. Okay, people go on a diet, they lose weight, which is brilliant, but they've lost their muscle mass as well which means that they're in a worse off state than before in many ways, even though they're, uh, they've got less fat. And then they put it back on again because it's much more difficult to maintain your weight at any given level when you've got less muscle and less good functional muscle. So what happens during dieting? Well, first of all, you, you're in a catabolic state. A catabolic state is a state where you're breaking things down. Now, the body has different stores of energy. Uh, it has glycogen, which is a, a storage form of, of starch, of, of glucose, okay, blood sugar. And that's glycogen is mainly in the liver and it's in your muscles. You only have a couple of thousand calories of it, so it's not very much. And you deplete that uh, quick enough if you're not topping it up. And it's one of the reasons why people have a rapid weight loss when they uh, in the initial week of, of dieting because it hangs on to a lot of water, just its nature. And so when the glycogen is broken down, you lose a lot of water as well and you get a disproportionate change in your weight quite often. The second uh, storage is of course fat and we want to get rid of that. You need to be in a caloric deficit to get rid of that and a lot of tricks and helps uh, for, for that. But the third part is uh, your uh, major storage is uh, protein, muscle in particular. So we can break down proteins to give us energy. Even uh, I used to do an awful lot of uh, lab research and uh, about kind of the, uh, what I was burning essentially and I'd quite often be burning up to 1% protein. But what happens is uh, protein when you're in a deficit state uh, can be broken down and some of it is literally burnt. So uh, you need energy and uh, some of it can come from uh, proteins because most things in the body are interchangeable. Uh, proteins can go into, uh, can end up as fat and a bit of urea that goes out in the urine. Uh, proteins can end up as sugar which can be burnt for uh, extreme exercise if you want or used by the brain and part of it goes out in the uh, urine as, uh, as urea and of course proteins can be broken down and used for other proteins. Your muscles and your proteins are all the time breaking down and reconstituting okay or, or synthesizing rather okay so they've been broken down and they've been built up all the time and it seems that the synthesis side seems to be maintained fairly well during dieting. It's a breaking down which accelerates, okay? And that kind of makes sense. What we need to make sure is that you don't break down as much and that you maximize the synthesis. So 20 to 35% of uh, weight loss typically is from muscle. So how to prevent that? It tends to be worse. So these figures tend to be worse than people who have maybe slightly less weight to lose. People who, uh, who are men uh, rather than women, this could be because men start off with a higher uh, percentage of, of muscle uh, generally, and uh, worse than blacks and whites for the sake of argument, and there are individual differences. But the principles remain the same. What do we do in order to maximize our retention of muscle? Okay, and it is kind of quite difficult to build up muscle when you're in a catabolic state. Some people do it. So it is, it is possible. It's also possible with uh, external hormones as, hormones as well. So why do you want to maintain your muscle? Like obviously for, for looks, uh, for girls and for guys, uh, it's tremendously important. 
you don't need to be hulking or anything like that, uh, but you need a certain muscle tone and muscle mass, your energy expenditure as well. So for long term, you need to uh, be expending a lot of energy. What happens a lot of the time is when people diet, their the rate of energy they expend during the day decreases as well. This is partly due to the basic metabolic rate goes down. Muscle has a little bit of tone in it. You know, if you uh, pick up a baby, uh, a, really, a baby is asleep, they're really floppy, you know? And adults, I never like that. We always have some muscle tone, okay? And this muscle tone takes some energy just to keep it ticking over. Just standing, sitting, whatever you're doing, takes energy. But, not a huge amount. Probably where the real difference is uh, when it's measured is in relation to what we call NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that basically means when you're not exercising, the stuff that you're doing that creates heat, and that could be just moving your hands around a lot, it could be shifting from leg to leg. When you've got a little bit of muscle, especially when it's kind of well trained, you just have a bit more energy, you have, there's a bit more vitality about you, and you're much more likely to, you know, uh, get up and say hello to someone, you're more likely to, if you're going to the mall, if there's no parking space right beside the door, you won't mind parking, you know, 100 yards away and walking, you might take the stairs slightly more, you know, there, there is a when they track people, they see a lot of people uh, just burn more calories by doing more uh, with the muscles every day, irrespective of any exercise kind of sessions that they have. You put two people on the exact same diet and at similar weights, and yet one puts on weight and one loses weight. Another reason to maintain your uh, muscle course is for your general health, and in particular your diabetes control. Okay, your glucose control, your blood sugar control, mostly that's sunk in the muscle in healthy people. About 80%, if you take in a, you know, a carb meal, 80% of that would be sunk in your muscle in a good healthy person. Okay, and you need the muscles to do that. And diabetes is the inability to, to control fluctuations in uh, blood sugar. And the figures are frightening. Most people are overweight or you're diabetic or pre-diabetic. And it looks as if almost 50% of the US population are diabetic or pre-diabetic. This is just frightening and we need to kind of halt that. Pre-diabetic just means they're on the road towards diabetes. It's already clear that their ability to control blood sugar is diminished. And you don't want to diminish that further by getting rid of your muscles. And in particular, type 2 muscle fibers, these are strength fibers because uh, they suck up an awful lot of, uh, of blood sugar and these need to be protected at all costs. In terms of kind of longevity and overall health, it seems that uh, muscle activity is absolutely crucial to your health. Your muscle mass, it, it's really easy to measure muscle mass. Uh, our muscle strength and these are closely correlated with longevity, with health, you know, how long you live at age 70 is much better predicted by your muscle mass rather than your fat mass. And it's a direct correlation with everything from kind of Alzheimer's to strokes to heart attacks to uh, hypertension to diabetes. Uh, the list goes on and on. And particularly your ability to function, also some of the cancers, your ability to function and uh, your activities of daily living. So you want to keep your muscle mass. So when people are dieting, you're breaking things down, it can be broken down from uh, glycogen, which goes quickly, and uh, you can break down fat, which is brilliant, and you want to maintain that, or you can break down protein, which is awful. So protein you probably know is um, in everything from obviously meat and dairy, uh, it's in legumes and beans, and uh, nuts are a great source, fish as well, of course. So vegans can do this too, uh, but they need to be very careful and eat from a wide variety because there's some what's called essential amino acids. Amino acids are what's, what, what make up proteins, they're the building blocks of proteins. So amino acids, some of them are essential, you have to ingest them. 
It would appear that, uh, interestingly, uh, breaking news here is that kind of there are, there's some gut bacteria which may adapt and actually and, and convert well amino acid to an essential amino acid uh, in vegans in the gut. But this is very early stage research. So, but in the meantime, you just think you have to take in all the protein. So how much protein should you take in? Because you're either breaking things down or you're building them up. So it would appear that during dieting, uh, that there's an increase in breaking things down. Okay, so your proteins are being broken down more, and that kind of makes sense. The synthesis actually is somewhat preserved, it would appear, but because you're breaking things down an awful lot, the balance changes and you lose muscle mass. So you need to increase the synthesis quite an amount and you have to create the conditions that as little will be broken down as possible. So there are two ways to do this and you need to do both. You need to have an adequate uh, protein intake. So how much protein do you need? Well, I'd recommend two grams per kilogram of body weight. So for me, it's, 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 uh, let's say 140 grams or 130, 140 grams kind of as a minimum. You don't want to go too high because uh, too much protein has been associated on a population basis uh, with some uh, metabolic conditions. But you don't want to go any lower because you want to give your body every chance to have all the building blocks to build uh, your muscles and to maintain your muscles. Can this be done uh, while dieting? Uh, absolutely. It's a difficulty for people in keto uh, because proteins can be transformed into glucose and, and a bit of uh, urea, there's a recommendation generally that you lower your protein intake, that you have maybe 70% of your calorie intake is in form of fat, which is hugely high. The carbs make up 10% uh, or less, which is very low and great, no problem with that. But it's a protein in between that's only 20 to 30%. And uh, that's fine for dieting now, but you need to make sure that you don't lose too much muscle and it's easier at a higher intake. The reason why people in keto uh, kind of take lower levels of protein is because the protein kick, uh, elevates their, uh, their glucose, which kicks them out of, uh, of ketosis. Quick trick is to use Bionic Gym and that will gobble up a lot of that glucose as it happens and help get you back into ketosis really quickly. Or do a long uh, exercise protracted exercise, regular exercise, long walk, uh, obviously better for run, or if you can do a HIIT session, and uh, that's even better again. Uh, we'll gobble up your glycogen and gobble up the, uh, the glucose that's spilling into your system from, from the protein. The protein you should spread out during the day if possible as well. Uh, it does appear though that doesn't necessarily have to happen because people with intermittent fasting can keep their uh, muscle levels up. But from studies in the elderly, it does show that uh, you're much better having a bit of protein for breakfast if you're eating breakfast uh, than, than dinner. But spread it out during, during, during the day. But the most important thing is you use it or lose it, okay? Use it or lose it, this is, uh, you've all heard that before. So, but it goes down to the particular fibre type level. And this is why walking is, while walking is brilliant, it's insufficient to maintain muscle mass. You just don't use all the muscle fibers and fiber types as you're walking. This is kind of quite easily illustrated when we kind of think of an old person, they can hardly get out of the chair, okay? But what they do do is they can then walk for a long period of time. So the difference, it requires strength to get out of the chair, but then that they can then walk for a period of time, which means that walking is a different uh, call on the body. And when we look at the fiber types, an old person and someone who's had a cast on, you know, where you, you've broken your arm, you're in a cast, and uh, six weeks later, all your muscles have disappeared. That happens in space as well. One of the reasons they're, they're interested in Bionic Gen with the European Space Agency. But your muscles, when they're not used, wither away. But they wither in a particular fashion. And these type 2 muscle fibers are associated with strength wither first. They waste away. So this is why walking, which doesn't really use these type 2 muscle fibers, is insufficient. Do do the walking, don't get me wrong, walking is brilliant, but it's not enough. 
So you need to do some high intensity exercise, you need to do some resistance training in particular, or a bionic gym. I use kind of a bionic gym uh, at low intensity sometimes, and then sometimes increased intensity preferentially targets these type of type two muscle fibers that will give you a very good workout if you want. Burn calories obviously, but it will also maintain these type two muscle fibers because they're activated. For your upper body, you can just do some weights. Uh, or you can do uh, press-ups, body weights. It only needs to take a minute or two per day, okay? You don't need to go down to the gym. You just need to do something that requires strength of, of your muscles, okay? And of, of your muscle bulk. And, and that only takes a minute or two, okay? If it takes longer, it's less strength and it becomes a different type of exercise. Not to say going down to the gym and spending two hours there isn't beneficial, of course it is, but if we have busy lives, you need to get on and you need to do this every single day, okay? Your muscles are breaking down every day when you're in this catabolic state, you need to be building them up every day. You're unlikely to get uh, big muscles while you're dieting, it's because it's simply harder, but you need to maintain what you have, otherwise you'll deteriorate and you'll end up in a year's time been heavier again. I hope this has been helpful uh, and uh, really appreciate you listening. I do really wish that you do use those type 2 muscle fibers every day while you're dieting and you get sufficient protein and sufficient quality protein. This will keep your muscles, you'll have a much greater chance of success, you'll look much better and be much healthier. So if you find it useful please uh, subscribe Give me a like and I'll be really appreciated and uh, enjoy the day.